So spatial queries. Spatial queries are just a short way of saying calculations in 3D space using geometric data. So hit detections, collision bounds, etc. are all calculated using a spatial query. Now in Roblox's case, our spatial database is the workspace. And with that, all of our spatial query operations will be from the workspace. You can access the workspace service by using the get service function and then inserting workspace as a string, but the workspace is used so often that Roblox made workspace a global value, so you can just say workspace and the computer will automatically know you're looking at the workspace service. Now workspace has four spatial query operations. Raycasting, get part bounds and box, get part bounds and radius, and get parts and part. Raycast and get parts and part use collision geometry, while part bounds and box and part bounds and radius use part bounds geometry. Collision geometry uses the collision bounds of a part, while bound geometry uses the bounding boxes of instances. If you hover over an object in the workspace, you can see these blue lines around the object. That is its bounding box. You can predict that with abnormally shaped parts, using this bounding box is not the best solution. If you want to check the collision geometry of a part, you can do so by turning on a studio setting called Show Decomposition Geometry. Now when you look at parts, it will color its objects based on collisions. It's more visible with meshes and unions. Using collision geometry is more useful for parts whose bounding boxes don't really represent the collisions, such as mesh parts or unions. The only drawback is that it's less performant than checking part bounds. Now onto the queries. So raycasting is the most common, so we'll start with that first. The raycast function takes three arguments. The origin of the raycast is where it'll start. The direction of the raycast is the length and the direction of the raycast. So if I wanted the direction to be straight up, the directional vector would be a vector 3 with only a value in the y-axis. The magnitude of this directional vector would be the length of the raycast as well. So if I raycast it from the origin to vector 3.new 0, 1, 0, then the length of the raycast would be 1 since the magnitude of that directional vector is 1. Now the last argument is an optional raycast parameters object, which is a unique object to raycasting that gives raycasts more specific behavior if needed. It has two coupled parameters, filter type and filter descendants instances, which blacklist or whitelist parts based on the filter type. So if I had a params object with a filter type of a blacklist, all the instances and their descendants of the filter descendants instances table would be ignored. If the filter type is a whitelist, then the raycast would ignore every part except the parts inside that table. Raycast params also has an ignore water property, which determines whether or not a raycast will detect water. And it has a collision group, which will ignore parts based on the collision group of the raycast. When the function runs, the raycast will be fired at the origin point, directed towards its direction, and the first object detected from the raycast will result in the return of a raycast result object. The raycast result contains information on the collision of the raycast. It contains the instance that was hit, the vector 3 position it was hit at, at what distance it was hit at, the material enum of the hit instance, and the vector 3 normal. With these, you can do a lot of things, like detecting if the hit instance was a limb of a character and damaging them, making hit sounds at intersected points based off the material, or bouncing projectiles off walls using the normal of the vector 3. Now let's do some raycast. So this first example is going to be a raycast without raycast params. I have three parts lined up. There's a blue part which will resemble the start of the raycast, there's a green part which will be for raycasting purposes, and there's a red part which will be the target position of the raycast. The target position is not the direction of the raycast, it is just the position we want the raycast to point towards. So if I make a raycast from the blue part's position with a directional vector pointed towards the red part's position, we can see that the raycast will be going through the collisions of the green and red parts. The raycast won't detect the blue part even though it passes through the collision geometry because raycasts only detect collisions of the outside surface. So in this scenario, the raycast is only going to return a raycast result of the first part, the green part. So when I print out the result and click run, the output will give me a formatted raycast result string of all the data inside of it. We can see the part that was hit, the position, the normal, and the material. This next example will be using raycast params. I'm going to be raycasting from the same origin in the same direction, but I'm going to have a raycast params object with a filter type of a blacklist, and this green part will be in the blacklisted table. So when I run the game now, I still get a raycast result, but it's the red part instead with the corresponding information. Now this third example will be one with a different directional vector. Let's make this new example have a part keep raycasting every second and print out the result if it detects anything. The new directional vector will be the direction relative to the part. I want the direction vector to be 10 studs out in front of the part, 
so the directional vector will be the look vector of the part times 10. Once we run the game, now I can move this part around and get different raycast results from the query. So the next spatial query we're going to use is get part bounds and box. This function takes a C frame and a size vector 3 and then constructs a box that will be looking for instances in. It also takes a third optional overlap params object, which is similar to raycast params but is used for region collisions. Overlap params has the same filter type and filter descendants instances properties, but it has an extra max parts property, which if set, will return a maximum number of parts equal to that property. If it is zero, the number is infinite. Now once the function runs, it returns a table of objects whose part bounds were detected in that area. Like I said before, the number of parts in the table returned will be less than or equal to the max parts property. And if it's zero, like I said, it'll be an infinite number of parts in that table. Now mind you, I did say part bounds, which means those blue outlines, not the actual collision geometry. So now I'm going to show you an example using this function. I made a zone out of the blue part and put some green parts in there. I'm going to use the blue part as the zone to detect part bounds in, so in the script I'm going to use the blue part C frame and the blue part size as the first two parameters. I want to ignore the actual part representing the zone, so I'll make an overlap params object that will blacklist that part, and then I'll set that as the third argument. Then I'll set the whole function to a variable and print it out afterwards. When I run the game, the output will print a table of all the parts inside this box. Get part bounds and radius also checks the bounds. It takes a positional vector 3 of the position of the query and a numerical radius value. So if I change the shape of the zone into a ball, we can visualize which parts are going to be in the return table and which ones won't. In the script, we can just use the position of the sphere as the origin, and since spheres in Roblox are automatically set to have equal size components, I can just use half of one of the components as my radius. I also want to ignore the actual sphere itself, so I'll include that in my overlap params argument. Running the game prints out the parts inside the sphere. Now be careful with these two functions. They only detect part bounds, not where the part actually is. So if I have a part like a sphere, where its part bounds don't accurately reflect the sphere object, it could be inserted into this table without actually being in it. If you want super accurate detection, you can use the get parts and part method. This only takes two arguments, which is the base part you want to use as a detection zone and the overlap params to go along with it. This function returns a table of parts whose collision geometry were intersecting or inside the parts geometry. Since this function doesn't detect bounding boxes, it's much more friendly to parts like spheres and cylinders. The only drawback is that it's less performant. As you can see, spatial querying is essential to games. Developers use them for many things like projectiles, safe zones, and explosions. So, you should know spatial queries pretty well. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.